Good morning. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, first, as a reminder, we have uh, Vacation Bible School materials in the back if the kids want to be a part of that. Um, they may do so yet. I think this is the last week, if I remember correctly, that it will be there. So please remember that. Also, uh, starting not this week, but next week, uh, there's going to be a, a group called Divorce Care. If you know anybody who's divorced and who needs uh, just to have some camaraderie and working through some of the issues, this would be the group for them. Please either share the group with them or let us know and we can contact them or we can do it both ways. Uh, that, that would be fine as well. So please do take a look at that and, and encourage people. Secondly, uh, I thank you for wearing your masks in. I, I appreciate that. And I remind you as well, though, uh, when you bring offerings up and stuff, please keep those masks on just to spread the slowness of that uh, disease. So please do remember that. Right now, uh, please wave and greet one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Therefore, 
Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We take a moment of silence for reflection on God's word and self-examination. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, Father in heaven, have mercy upon us.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, your, by your gift alone, your faithful people render true and laudable service. Help us steadfastly to live in this life according to your promises, and finally attain your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 29. And Isaiah writes, Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful yield field shall be regarded as a forest? In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. For the ruthless shall come to nothing, and the scoffers cease, and all who watch to do evil shall be cut off, who by a word make a man out to be an offender, and lay a snare for him who reproves in the gate, and with an empty plea turn aside him who is in the right. Therefore thus says the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall no more be ashamed, no more shall his face grow pale. For when he sees his children, the work of, his, of my hands in his midst, they will sanctify my name. They will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. And those who go astray in spirit will come to understanding, and those who murmur will accept instruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10. St. Paul writes, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news! But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And we read together. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers in his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open. And his ears were open, 
his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Today we hear about one of Jesus' miracles where he opens a man's ears to hear and mouth to speak. And it gives me the opportunity to talk about miracles. Why does Jesus do them? Why are they recorded for us? What do these miracles reveal? And I'm going to list five things that we should learn from Jesus' miracles. First, the first thing that the miracles reveal is Jesus' compassion. Why does he do them? Because he sees people in these miserable conditions, and it breaks his heart. He becomes gut-wrenched. He is moved to help. Today in our text, he sees this poor, miserable man, and looking up to heaven, he groans. He sighs. It hurts him to see the brokenness of the creation. In the very next text, he feeds 4,000 because he says, I have compassion on the crowds, and he's worried that they might faint on their way home. So Jesus' miracles reveal his personality, that he is full of compassion. And this should encourage us to pray, because apparently begging works. <laughs> Being pathetic works. He is moved with compassion, and he will help. Now, I'm not saying you'll always get a yes to your prayers, <laughs> because you won't. But what I am saying is that because Jesus is compassionate, you know that he always hears you, that he deeply cares about your situation. And whatever he does, he'll do what's best, that he will work all things, even the bad things, for good. Miracles reveal compassion. Second, miracles reveal Jesus' authority. Not only does he want to help, but he's able to help. He's been authorized by God, sent from God to help us. Now, some people would say that miracles prove that Jesus is God, and we'll get to that one next. But that's not necessarily true. For many prophets did miracles, such as Moses and Elijah. But the miracles do imply that he's sanctioned by God. And if the miracles are from God, so are his sermons. It means the promises he's making are also from God. That his claim to forgive sins, to be able to forgive you your sins, that's also from God. So to prove that he has the authority to forgive sins and to make glorious promises, he also does miracles. Third, Miracles prove that he's God, <laughs> that he's the Messiah, that he's the Lord, but they do that by a roundabout way. Miracles prove this insofar as they fulfill Old Testament passages, Old Testament prophecies. For instance, our Old Testament reading today from Isaiah 29 and, and its sister passage, I, I think Isaiah 35, we're told that when the Lord comes, the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf will be unstopped, the lame will leap like the deer, and the mute will sing for joy, and the people will marvel at God's presence, the Holy One of Israel. Well, what happens in our text? Jesus opens the ears of the deaf. Jesus makes the mute sing for joy. Jesus is the one at whom Israel marvels, which reveals that Jesus is Yahweh. He is God in the flesh. He is the Holy One of Israel, the God of the Old Testament, now made man. He is our Savior. So yes, some of the miracles reveal Jesus' identity, but the way that they do that is by fulfilling specific Old Testament promises. Number four, and this is the big one for me, Miracles are pictures of the last day. They are windows through which we can look and see the new heavens and the new earth. What will it be like, what will the world be when Jesus comes again? There will be no more blindness, 
No more deafness. There'll be no one who is mute, no one who is disabled. And therefore, there will also be no kind of sickness at all. There'll be no old age, no cancer, no aches and pains, no dementia, no death. There will be no sadness, <laughs> only joy. So miracles are signs that point to your future. If you think about it, not everyone received miracles, even in Jesus' day, even in Elijah's day. Jesus points out that there were many starving widows in Elijah's day, but only one received a miracle of food. And there were many lepers in Elisha's day, and only one leper received a miracle, and he was a foreigner. And even if you received such a miracle, it was only temporary, because all those who were healed later got sick and died. These miracles had no lasting effect. They helped people for a while, but death still came. However, miracles are a picture of what will be permanent. Jesus may not give you a miracle now, but you will get one when he comes in glory and raises the dead. So no, you may not get a temporary miracle but all who believe will receive the eternal miracle when you receive the resurrection of the body and the life in the world to come. I know many of you are hoping for a miracle. You're praying. We've prayed together. You should pray. And when we, when we read a story like this, we begin to think things like, why, am I not, why don't I get my miracle? Am I praying enough? Am I praying wrongly? Do I need more faith? What's, what's up? And that's not it at all. The point of this reading is not to show you what you could have if you did things right. Rather, it's to point to you what you do have coming in your future. Just as Jesus helped this man, he has promised to do the same and more for you on the last day. Jesus is coming soon, and it will be glorious. He's going to take away everything bad and give us everything good, and we will marvel at the Holy One of Israel. Miracles are in your future. Which brings me to number five. Finally, miracles also sometimes have a symbolic quality. They can kind of double up as parables. Like when Jesus curses the fig tree, that's symbolic of Jerusalem's destruction. Or in Mark, Jesus heals a man so he can see halfway, and then he heals the man all the way. And I think this is symbolic that at that point in his ministry, the disciples can half see, but eventually Jesus will open their eyes to completely see. And today, I think our miracle has this quality of, of being symbolic. A lot of church fathers have pointed out that what Jesus did for this man physically, opening the ears, opening the mouth, Jesus does for all of us spiritually. By the gospel, he opens our ears to hear his gracious promises. He opens our hearts and our minds to believe. He loosens our tongues so we can confess, oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. And that's why Romans 10 is chosen as our epistle, that faith comes from hearing. God opens our ears. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be healed. We cannot hear or believe or confess on our own. We are like this pathetic man who had to be brought to Jesus. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe. But Jesus has opened my ears. He has loosened my tongue. He has placed faith into my heart. And so all glory goes to him, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
So, why miracles? First, because they reveal our compassionate God who always hears our prayers. Second, they reveal Christ's authority, and therefore everything he says is true, including your sins are forgiven. Third, they reveal his identity, that he is Lord and Savior, the one promised of old. Fourth, they are pictures of eternity, pictures of the day of resurrection, of what God has planned for your future. And fifth, they can also teach other things, like today, showing us that only God can open ears to hear and lips for praise. If you don't see these things, you might think that the miracle was just for that one man, and you might become jealous. Why, don't, why does he get a miracle? Why don't I get a miracle? But friend, Jesus did this miracle for you so that you could see his love just as he most beautifully displayed his love when he hung on the cross. Jesus lived for you. He died for you. He rose for you. It all was for you. And he's going to return to give you all that he has promised. So rejoice this day and marvel at the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that in your mercies you made the deaf hear, especially to hear the word of your, of your gospel. We thank you that Christ has sent his spirit to us, that we may hear with ears of faith, that we who cannot by our own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ or come to him have had our minds opened through that gospel, our hearts made new, that we might be your people. Let us rejoice in this greatest of all miracles, that by your goodness our praise today may be just a prelude for the praise of eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the family here at St. John. What a blessing it is that you have made us your children, and together we gather around your table. We pray for, especially today, the Grayson family, uh, the Gary Griffith family, the Douglas Griffith family, for Dora Griffith and Emily and the whole family, that by your goodness they might always receive your good and gracious gifts with thanksgiving. Be with the persecuted church throughout the world, that by your goodness they might always stand steadfast in the face of trial and tribulation, and that they might receive the crown of eternal life. And in this life, they might be example to us in steadfastness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the mission and ministry we have here at St. John that you would bless us as we seek to proclaim Christ and him crucified, that you would bless our schools, we teach our children uh, the word of God as well as the things of this world that you have made. We pray that you would bless our mission of the month, McRest, that those who are homeless might find places of shelter in times of need, and that we might be an aid in all of that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those... Heavenly Father, who have to give thanks and praise for your gifts. We thank you for the wedding anniversaries of Jim and Betty Walsh and Keith and Chris Olson. Grant that by your care they might continue to rejoice in all of your gifts and that they might be example of your undying love to the church and the way we as your bride listen to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick and hospitalized for Nancy, and for Margaret, for Ruth, for Don, for Ron, for Annalise, for Ron and Jim and Joyce, that by your goodness they might continue to find strength and healing from your hand, that the doctors and nurses and all who care for them might be agents of your healing power, and that they may rejoice now and in eternity. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn at the time of death, for the family and the friends of Ronald Kerwood, that by your goodness they might take hope in the promises of the resurrection of, uh, to life for all who die in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our nation, in the midst of unrest and violence, in the midst of distrust and disunity, that you would bring about those gifts of repentance and care, that all may live together in peace and harmony, looking out for the best for their neighbor and seeking always to bring justice in this world. Be of the leaders of our nation, that they might have wisdom and understanding and receive good and just counsel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be of the leaders of our church body, President Harrison of the Synod and President Meyer of our district, that they might always walk in the true confession of faith and also lead us in that same confession. Be of the leaders of our own congregation, lay and pastoral alike, that there always might be the desire to proclaim your goodness in the midst of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for the city of Detroit and those of us in her suburbs, that by your goodness we indeed might have a time of peace, and where there is distrust, work and openness that brings about harmony and peace, where there is poverty, provide jobs that all might work and have an abundance to share with those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, into your hands we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and we worship the Lord at this time with our offerings. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had to mercy in us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us, your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. And we all ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>